In this lesson, we finally get, in our progress of algebra, to the basics. Uh, the fundamental theorem of algebra, fundamental of course means the most basic concept, states that if p of x is a polynomial of degree n greater than or equal to 1, then p of x equals 0 has exactly n roots, including multiple and complex roots. And the key piece here is exactly. What this means if we were to take a quick graph of a linear function, this is n equals 1 for the degree, it has one root, and we can see it crosses the x-axis at exactly one location. If we were to do this for something a little bit more complicated, such as a quadratic, quadratic function will cross the axis twice, sometimes. Sometimes it crosses just one, or it just touches, or it might miss altogether. What this entails is we have two real roots, two unique real roots, one real root with a multiplicity of two, or two imaginary roots when it comes to the one that doesn't touch it. No matter what, because in this graph, n equals two, we have to have two roots. In the first one, n equaled one, that meant we had to have one root. For cubic functions, which we're starting to become familiar with through this unit, we can have a cubic that does a graph like this. And you can see we have three unique roots. We could have simply one that comes up and moves on. That has three roots, but it's one root of a multiplicity of three. Or we can have one that comes up and then does its jog in the air, we have one real root and two imaginaries that would be happening. So no matter what, we have to have the same number of roots as what the degree of the polynomial is. That is the entire concept when it comes to solving equations that algebra is based around. Let's take a look at how we can use this to help us narrow down some of our work. Let's calculate all of the roots for each polynomial function or equation. Well, our first one we need to put in the standard form to make it even valid for the fundamental theorem of algebra. So, moving everything to the left, we end up with x to the fourth plus 2x cubed minus 13x squared minus 10x equals zero. Because this is a fourth degree polynomial, I must have four roots of some sort. So, first thing I want to try and do is factor this. I can pull an x out of everything, leaving me with x cubed plus 2x squared minus 13x minus, or plus, sorry, plus 10 equals 0. Now, I know that one of my roots is going to be x equals 0, because that is what makes this first term 0. Next, I'm going to employ some of our long division. So I pull aside here. I have 1, 2, negative 13, and 10 as my coefficients. I automatically drop the 1. And going off of uh, 10, let's start with an even number 2. So multiplying, I get 2, adding 4, multiplying 8, adding negative 5, multiplying negative 10, adding, I get 0. So this leaves me with 2 being a root. Next, let's try converting this into a quadratic and factoring it. So I'd have x squared plus 4x minus 5 equals 0. What numbers multiply to negative 5 and add to 4? Well, that is x plus 5 and x minus 1. So that means my last two roots are going to be 1 and negative 5. So I knew because it was a quadrat is a quartic that I would have four roots. So I worked until I found the four roots. And if we were to graph this, it would show those four locations as crossings of the x-axis. Next, let's try f of x. 
f of x equals x to the fourth plus x cubed minus 7x squared minus 9x minus 18. All of our uh, degrees are accounted for here. Um, don't have anything that we can factor out of this, so let's begin by converting it into a long division problem. Uh, so I have 1, 1, negative 7, negative 9, and negative 18. Going through and trying to divide this out, um, let's try a 2 real fast. So, multiplying this through, I get 2, that adds to 3, 6, negative 1, negative 2, negative 11, negative 22, negative 40. That does not work. Let's try a 3. Multiplying, I get 3, add, that makes 4. Multiplying brings us to 12. Adding will make it 5. Multiplying gives us 15. Adding gives us 6. Multiplying gives us 18. Adding brings us to 0. So we found one of our roots, x is equal to 3. Now, something I like to do, this doesn't always work out, is if I find one root, I like trying the negative of that same one. So, what happens if we use negative 3? And we can build a chain of uh, synthetic division, one on top of another. So we multiply this through, we get negative 3. Add gives us 1. Multiplying, negative 3. Adding gives us 2. Multiply, negative 6. Adding gives us 0. So we found another root. It is negative 3. Now I'm at a quadratic. So I can say x squared plus x plus 2 equals 0. Using, this does not factor, so I'm going to try using the quadratic formula. So I'll have negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times 2. So 1 squared is 1, 4 times 1 times 2 is 8, 1 minus 8 is negative 7, all divided by 2. So this gives me negative 1 plus or minus square root of 7i divided by 2 and those are my last two they are irrational pair so I have negative 1 plus root 7 over 2i and negative 1 minus root 7 over 2i so we have found our roots and we knew how many we were looking for based on the fundamental theorem of algebra and you can also see here we have uh, re conjugates based on our conjugate root theorem because we got one we knew we had to have the other one in there somewhere let's take a look at another example here we're going to calculate all the zeros of g of x and confirm it with a graph so as we go through we have a quartic again, so we should be looking for four roots. Let's convert this into a synthetic division. 2, negative 3, 0, negative 1, and negative 6. And we automatically bring down our 2. So, um, again, it's even, so let's start with an even number. Let's start with 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Add that gives us 1. Multiply is 2, add is 2, multiply is 4, add we get 3, multiply we get 6, add we have 0. So we found one of our roots. We should have a root at x equals 2. Next we're on a cubic, um, so we could try a number of things. Uh, having done a little bit of work on this one before, I know I'm going to try negative 1 just to speed this up. Multiplying, we get negative 2. Add, we get negative 1. That becomes 1, 3, negative 3, and 0. So negative 1 is a root. Now we have a quadratic, so we're looking at 2x squared 
minus x plus 3 equals 0. Do we know a pair of numbers that will multiply to 6 and add to negative 1? And no, we do not. Not with a positive multiplier and a uh, negative add-in. So we're going to have to use quadratic formula. Uh, x is going to equal negative b plus or minus the square root of that 1 squared minus 4 times a times c is going to be 24 all divided by 4. So this becomes 1 plus or minus square root of 23i because it is negative inside that radical divided by 4 and those are our two other roots one positive one negative an imaginary conjugate. Now pulling up a graph for this we get a graph that looks as such and you can see we have crossings of the x-axis at negative 1 and positive 2. The other crossings would happen where these turnarounds are trying to happen so we have our imaginary roots in these areas. So we have a lot of work that we can do. Um, before we were just kind of making guesses trying to do the best we could but with the fundamental theorem of algebra we now know exactly how many roots we're going to have for any given polynomial. So make sure you have this concept down. Again, this is the basic, the fundamental work that everything's ba uh, going to grow off of. And from here, we can do a lot of work with a lot of different functions.